What's up YouTube? This is to Profit YouTube here and now we're going to talk about compounded interest and both types of interest that we're going to find under this title which are effective rate of interest and a nominal rate of interest. So let's start by saying that the effective rate of interest is the most important rate of interest of us, of all. Because all the equations on the financial math are created under this concept. So let's talk about this. An effective rate of interest an effective rate of interest has three specific parts. You know, like most people have first name, middle name and last name. A rate a rate of interest also has a middle a first name, a second uh, name and a, a middle name and a last name which are going to be called time period of payment and moment. We're going to talk about, we're going to come back to this a little bit later, but it is defined as an effective rate of interest when the time is equals to the period of payment and the moment is always due. So by this, let's understand uh, this example. An annual annually due rate is an effective um, rate of interest, which is effectively annually, effective annually, I'm sorry about this. So monthly, monthly due is effective quarter, uh, monthly, I'm sorry about this, <laughs> let's call this a, okay, monthly, so I don't have to erase. So if you have a quarterly, quarterly due rate of interest, that's an effective quarterly. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Let's see. Okay, so what I mean by this is that for a period of time of one year, and see, yes, and every year we're going to collect or we're going to pay our interest at the end. This is what it means. This is what this means, right? You know, for monthly, monthly due. You say that for a period of time of one month, and every month, you're going to pay at the end of the month. And you're going to do this, so on and so forth, for the time of the loan or the investment until you get to 12 or 18 or 24 or whatever, whatever you want. But monthly, <coughs> this is gonna, this is going to happen monthly and your interest are going to be paid or received here at the end, as you can see. And for the third one, we got quarterly, quarterly due. So this means that every, every three months, at the end of the three months, our interest are going to be paid. So this is going to happen here, and this is going to happen in six, this is going to happen in 9, and this is going to happen in 12. I'm sorry about the mess, but this is the idea. So, let's um, talk about nominal re interest rates. Just, uh, just like in the case of the effective rate of interest, this rate has time, period of payment, and moment. But it is called a nominal, a nominal rate of interest if the time is different than the period of payment and the moment could be in advance or due and if it happens that the time is equals to the period of payment the moment has to be in advance because if not it's going to be effective and we're going to talk about this type of rates in future videos because they're very interesting and uh, they're very useful even though uh, sometimes we don't uh, appreciate them even though we live on, on, on most of them especially when you're renting a house that belongs to you you're the landlord and you wanna uh, you know know what the interest rate of return is of your investment this is very important but let's put this aside and let's talk about this so what I mean by this let's let's see what I mean by this okay so here it is uh, so I put both concepts in different colors so we can uh, 
have a better explanation here. We can we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so let's talk about this one. When the time it's different, different than the period of payment, and the moment is due. So this is an example, and this is a very uh, common example, especially for the U.S. when you have a 12% compounded interest rate uh, for a mortgage or leasing or I don't know, whatever. So what it means is that for a period of time of 12 months, meaning a year, but every month your interest are going to be paid or received at the end of the month. So this happens all the way to the end. Okay, you, okay. here we got 5 and then 5, 6 and, well, you know. You get paid here. You get paid in every period from 1 to 12, but not in 0. And this is very important. Now, for the blue one, when the time is equal to the period of payment and the moment is in advance, so what it means is that from, for, a, for a period of time of a month, and every month, you're going to receive, receive or pay your interest in advance, in front, as you can say. So this happens all the way to the end, to 12, 18, or whatever. So you get paid or pay, you have to pay or pay, here, here, here. So you can see, here, so it comes to 10 and you pay here, but you don't pay in 12. You don't pay 12 because you paid in zero. You paid up front. Okay? So let's uh, learn how to change uh, equivalent rates and how to turn these nominal rates into effective rates because this is what we need. Because no equation on, under the uh, financial math is working with this. Does work with this. This is not because you can do almost any combination that you want. You can make an annual, annually, quarterly uh, due rate or you can make a quarterly, quarterly in advance rate and this is too hard. This is, this is not going to be very useful for us. So all the math, all the math we do in finance are going to be based on effective rates. So let's talk about how to change these effective rates from a longer period of time to, us, to its equivalent short period of time. That's it. So let's just say that we have a 3% uh, effective uh, interest rate, like this. The interest rate is 3% um, effective quarterly, okay? And for some reason, we needed to put it in terms of uh, monthly uh, effective rate just because we're going to have to pay a credit or whatever we have on investment it's going to be paid or we have to pay in a monthly manner in a monthly fashion if you want so um, the equation that we're going to use is this interest rate you know the small one the, uh, the greater one the small one let's, let's talk first about the small one because we go to a, from a quarter a quarterly uh, time a quarter, <laughs> I'm sorry about this, to a month. So what we have is the big one and we need the small one. So the small one is equals to one plus the greater one to the to the one over n power minus one times one hundred. So what this means is that we need to Okay, you put this in a decimal manner, okay? 0 0.03 to the 1 over, over what? So in a quarter, there is 3 months in a quarter, right? Minus 1 times 100. And the rate that we have is 0.99016% effective monthly. The other equation is when we go from a small, uh, small uh, rate 
to a greater rate. So it means is <coughs> the greater one is equals to one plus the small one to the n power minus one times one hundred. So if we want to go to uh, let's say effective annually because it's a big one mm. when compared to a quarter we're going to have to go like this 1 plus 0 0.03 to the fourth power minus 1 times 100 because there is four quarters in a year and the result is going to be 12.55 um, 0.88% effective annually and as you can see multiply by 4 just does not cut it <coughs> so what you get if you multiply by 4 so you have 3% quarterly quarterly do and you multiply by 4 you get 12% annually quarterly do, which is a nominal rate. This is a very uh, usual rate for the US, of course, but it's not something that we can use. Because as I, as I told you, only effective rates are designed to be working on um, all the equations on the, on the financial math. Let's see how we change nominal rates into effective rates. So what we have here is 12% uh, compounded monthly. And we need to turn it into a, an effective rate of interest, which is effective annually. So, in our words, in our words, now what we know, compounded monthly means that annual month due is this type of rate. This is a nominal rate. So if you divide this by 12, you change the first letter from a year, from annually, to monthly as you can see here and this has no effect and do right and this is one percent monthly monthly do which is effective monthly but this does not cut it because we need an effective annual annually we need a, a rate an interest rate which is effective annually so we go from a small one to a greater one so it means that interest effective annually is equals to 1 plus 0 0.01 to the 12th power minus 1 times 100 yes and this is 12 because there is 12 months in a year okay and the result for this and the result for this is 12 point 68 25 percent effective annually. If you see commas here, it's because I speak Spanish and we are used to this. So, 12% compounded monthly to effective annually, which is an, a rate that we can use, is 12.6825% effective annually. Thank you so much for uh, watching my videos. Thanks for watching my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.